When we build a React application, we can use React to build just about any web experience we want, right? We can build forms, nav bars, inputs, buttons, just about everything we want. Everything that you could possibly imagine inside the browser, we can probably use React for it. But there are some very notable examples, particularly for something very simple, such as a modal. So today we're gonna to talk about modals and why they're a little bit challenging to work with inside of a React application. In case you're not familiar with the term modal, I guarantee you know what a modal is. You may not know the term. A modal is just a window that pops up to the user. So this is an example of a modal right here. Typically we'll have a kind of black background, a white big window that pops up to the user, and modals are just used in general for getting the user's attention. So say a login form or a confirmation form or a error notification, just anything where we need to immediately get the user's attention. So modals are a little bit deceptively difficult to build in React applications. Today we're gonna to walk through the three stages of building a modal. So we're going to first start with kind of a naive approach for building a modal. Then we're going to improve it a little bit, kind of make it work. And then we're going to improve upon that to make it work fantastically for React and Redux applications. So we're gonna do a three-step process here, go from a bad approach to an okay approach to a great approach. So let's get started. Let's say that I want to build a modal component. I wanna build a modal from scratch and I want it to be 100% reusable. So I expect to have an application where I've got many different types of modals that need to show up on the screen. Let's say that I'll probably build a modal component and because I want it to be reusable, I will give the modal the ability to show some child component. So I can reuse this modal on the fly and just swap out the content inside the modal at will. Whenever I want to show a modal, I will just place the modal inside of some other component and whenever that parent component renders, it will show the modal and boom, the modal is gonna pop up on the screen. Now the key here is that the modal really works because of CSS. So because of CSS, we're going to use some styling to make sure that the modal pops up in the middle of the screen. You know, no matter where the user is scrolled to in the application, it should pop up in the very middle of the screen and it should always have like, you know, some number of pixels of offset from the uh, edges of the window as well. So you know, we got this kind of offset on here as well on the top left, right, and bottom of the modal. So because we are fantastic engineers, again, we're going to make sure that it's reusable. Uh, we can place in any child component inside of it and the content inside the modal will get swapped out. So as a practical example, the modal component itself will be responsible for you know, this kind of black overlay, the white window and the positioning of it. But then the content inside of the modal will be something that we should be able to easily customize on the fly. So we should be able to pass in some child component and have it just show up inside the modal. And that will make it truly a reusable component of sorts. So let's take a look at kind of this naive approach. All right, let's see just kind of what happens when we take this kind of approach where we make a reusable component that is displayed inside of another component. I've already taken the liberty of setting up a small demo application here. So right now we're looking at the app component and the app component has some amount of JSX inside of it. And I've got a component called bad modal in here. Right now it's commented out. So you know, I just wanna show you what the application looks like when the modal is not open. So let's refresh. And so this is the app as it stands right now. We just have these really weird hello tags on here. The hello is just to have something on the screen. Uh, you know, I guess I like greeting people or something. But anyways, the hellos are just to have something on the screen. So I'm now going to uncomment my modal. So now it should show up and I'm gonna refresh the page and great, so here's my modal. Notice how I've got some amount of content inside of it. You know, this header uh, looks like a paragraph tag and then red, blue, green. So if I go back over to my app component, you'll see here's my bad modal there's the h1 there's the paragraph tag and there's the colors as well and so to make this a very reusable component i can reorder the tags on the fly and boom everything gets reorganized as well so again the modal is just the kind of the vehicle it's this outline that positions itself and most importantly obstructs anything underneath it you know it, it just grabs our user's attention and we can reuse it as much as we want. So you might be sitting here thinking, well, Stephen, this looks fine. Like, what's, what's the issue? What's wrong with this? Uh, why is this a bad approach? And well, you know what? I'll, I'll show you why it's a bad approach. I'm gonna come over to my CSS file here 
And you can see that I've got some amount of styling for my modal. So this is all it takes to get a modal to show up on the screen. I've got position fixed, so it's going to show right up on the center no matter where the user is scrolled to. Uh, we've got top left, right, bottom, uh, a border, blah, blah, all this kind of good stuff on here. Everything to get a modal to show up on the screen. Now, I've also got some z-index on here as well. If you're not familiar with z-index as a CSS property, z-index is used to control the rendering order of elements on the screen. So whether or not some element should display on top of another one. As you might imagine, we always want a modal to show up on top of everything else. Like, no matter what, the modal needs to be on top of everything else on the screen. It should not be obstructed by some element. So with the approach we have, I'm going to just make some arbitrary little change here. I'm just going to uncomment this one particular rule. It doesn't necessarily matter what the rule is. You know, let's just ignore that for a second. And I'm going to refresh, and now all of a sudden, boom, my modal is broken. So when we take this approach of displaying a modal, where the modal itself is a child component, like very down far inside the hierarchy of all my components, we are almost always going to run into issues with z-index inside of our application. As soon as we start adding a lot of styling, we might want to add in some z-index to kind of control layering. And whenever we start playing with z-index, you're going to start running into issues like this with the modal. If you're at all familiar with uh, z-index context stacking, that's pretty much exactly what's going on here. Uh, I've got a, the modal is contained within the right uh, div, and then I've also got a left div as well. Uh, the right div has a z-index of 1, which means the right div and everything inside of it will kind of will have a z-index of 1 as a parent context. Uh, left is going to have a z-index of 3, which means everything inside of the left div is going to display on top of the right. And so that's what we're seeing here. This is the left div, and it's displaying on top of the right div, which is this list of hellos over here and also the modal as well. So that's a little bit getting a little bit into the weeds here, but uh, the, the reality here is that when we take this approach of showing a modal in a React application, we are always going to run into issues with z-index, where the modal is not going to end up being the top component on the screen. So how do we fix this? You know, again, this is like stage one. It's a naive approach. It can get a modal on the screen, but at some point in time, it's going to break and things are not going to work well. So how, you know, how might we fix this? Well, let's look at another approach here. Now, this looks a little bit crazy, so just bear with me for a little bit. This is going to be our step two for approaching this modal. This is going to be like our kind of good solution. We're still going to have a root component, but the root component, remember, is always displayed within document.body. So inside of all of our HTML documents, we always have a body tag, and that's where we usually are going to, at some point in time, place our root component. Now, the problem with our modal as it stands right now is that the modal is nested inside of our component hierarchy. So here's what we're going to do to fix this. We're going to make a new component, which we're going to kind of think of as like a fake modal of sorts. The fake modal, whenever it gets rendered to the screen, is going to reach back up to document.body and forcibly render a brand new component as a child to document.body. And so this is really breaking React convention right here in a big way, right? In React applications, we always have a root component and everything else is a child of that root component. So what I'm suggesting here is we kind of break that convention and we say that whenever we want to display a modal, we should create a new element or a new component and append, append it directly to document.body. Now that it's a child of body, we will not have any more stacking z-index issues. So this modal will always show up 100% of the time. So the fake modal here, you know, this is the key, the fake modal is going to create the modal on document.body. So, this diagram uh, kind of communicates what's going on, but still a little bit rough. So let's do a uh, written code example to see what's going on here. Uh, back inside my code editor, I'm going to make a new component, and I'm going to call this one just modal. And then we're going to put some boilerplate inside of here. We're going to take uh, React and component from React. Uh, I'm going to bring in React DOM from React DOM. And I think that's good for now. Let's make our modal class. It'll extend component. Now inside of here, inside of this modal, rather than returning like you know a div that has 
some fancy uh, CSS styling on it or any children or anything like that, I'm just going to return a no script tag. So no script basically means render nothing. You know, don't don't show anything. So when we display the modal component, it is not going to put it's not going to display anything on the screen whatsoever. Nothing will be displayed for the modal. So you might be thinking, well, how do we actually get this modal on the screen, right? Where like where does that happen? So the answer is that we're going to kind of do a little bit of a workaround here. I'm going to add in a component did mount. So whenever uh, this component gets mounted to the screen, whenever it gets rendered to the screen, I'm going to create a new div. So just like, like a floating div in memory. And I'm going to assign it to this.modal target. Now here's where some of the magic is going to come into play. I'm going to write out some of the code and we'll talk about what's going on. I'm going to add on a class name to the modal target of modal. And then this is where the magic is. I'm going to take this div that we just created and append it to the body tag in my document. And then I'm going to call a method called this dot underscore render. So let's see what underscore render does. So inside of underscore render, I'm going to take my React DOM library. And inside of here, we're going to render a div that contains this dot props dot children. And we're going to render it into, let me get a new line here, this dot modal target. Okay, so this is kind of the magic here. This is, this is how we're going to make this work. Whenever my modal component gets rendered to the screen, I'm going to create a new div, so just like a floating div out of thin air. I'm going to append it to document.body, so it gets appended to the body tag inside of my application. And then I'm going to use React DOM to render this.props.children to that new div that just got appended to the body. So this.props.children, uh, in case you've never used props.children before, is a reference to any components that get passed into my component. So in this case, bad modal would have gotten the h1, the p tag, and colors as props.children. Now step two is whenever the component's about to update, we'll do another render as well. And so this render is going to make sure that if we get a new set of components or a new set of children inside the modal, we're going to render those to the, the parent div as well. And finally, we'll do a little bit of cleanup whenever the component is about to unmount from the screen. We'll call react-dom.unmount component at node this dot modal target. So this will unmount the uh, this dot props dot children that we already rendered. And we will also document dot body dot remove child this dot modal target as well. And so this component will unmount is just a little bit of cleanup in here to make sure that we clean up the DOM whenever the modal is about to be uh, removed from the component hierarchy. Okay, so let's now import this modal into app. So I'm now going to import modal and then instead of displaying bad modal, we'll display modal. All right, let's give this a shot. So now when we refresh the page, it looks like everything shows up. Well, kind of, right? Kind of. I've got an error message here, and it says, could not find store in either context, blah, 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 all this kind of good stuff in here. And so this is, we're, right now we're kind of at step two, where we've got a modal that shows up on top of everything, but it still doesn't quite work all the way. I'm gonna make just one quick change and okay, we're good to go now. So we're definitely at step two here where we're getting a modal to show up on the screen, but we still got an error message on there. So I've got this colors component right here. The colors component, let's open that up. You'll see that colors is a Redux connected component. So it is a container. It makes access to the Redux store. I'm going to, I've got it uncommented now back inside of app. Let's do a refresh again and check out that error message again. So the error message says, cannot find store on either context or props of connect colors. We need to wrap the root component in a provider or explicitly pass store as a prop to connect colors. So what this is essentially saying right here is that 
we are trying to render a, let's pull it up here, we are trying to render a connected component or a container like over here apart from everything else inside of a React application. If you've ever worked with the connect helper from React Redux at all, you may know that the connect helper works in tandem with the provider tag that we place inside of our root component. So back inside of my top level index.js, remember I got this provider tag right here. Whenever we place a connected component, that connected component is making direct communication with this provider tag. So essentially, you know, kind of getting the weeds here again, essentially what's going on here is we've got this disconnected hierarchy where my child component is trying to get access to that provider tag, but the provider tag is not in the same hierarchy. The provider tag is like, you know, over here. And so the child component is trying to get access to the provider, but because they are in different hierarchies, the child component can't get access to the provider, it can't get access to the store, and so it throws the error that we see. So let's move on to step three. This is step three here. So this is specifically to make a modal work with a Redux application. In our default application, again, we've got this kind of provider over here on the left-hand side. It's always there. It's part of the boilerplate. So to fix our setup here, we're going to add another provider tag inside of the modal. So we're just going to import the provider helper. We'll provide our store to that provider. And then any child component that needs access to the Redux store will have access to the provider as well. So let's give that a shot as well. The first thing I'm going to do is over in modal, at the very top, we're going to import store. So this is the, my instance of my Redux store from index. And then I'll also import provider from React Redux as well. Now inside of my React DOM .render call, I can add my provider. like so. And as a prop, I'll pass in the store that I imp imported as well. So let's do a refresh now. And we can see everything successfully shows up on the screen. So if you've ever worked with, uh, just as a quick side note, if you've ever worked with the NPM library uh, React Redux, or excuse me, um, React Modal, this is very similar to how React, uh, that library works. But note that that library is going to break if you're using Redux, because if you try to use uh, connected component inside of the modal, it does not provide this provider tag in there, and so you're going to have a little bit of issue in there. So just something to be aware of. So at this point in time, we are now on to step three of our application. We have successfully decoupled our modal from the rest of our render tree. So the modal shows up as a child to document.body, and that means everything is always going to render on the screen appropriately because we don't have to worry about Z index when the modal is a direct descendant or direct child of document.body. We also fixed up our child component to work with Redux by also inserting another copy of our provider inside of the modal as well. So I know it's been a lot of work, a lot of uh, very technical terms in this, uh, in this video, but again, displaying modals is something that is not inherently super easy in a React and especially Redux application. So I hope this has helped to shed a little bit of light on what goes on behind the scenes. If you've enjoyed this video, I publish weekly videos on React, Redux, like everything JavaScript topics. You can check out more videos at rallycoding.com. And you can also check out the code for this example there as well. So I hope to see you next week where we're going to cover another exciting topic. I'll catch you later.